Ew. Gonna got a chapstick. <laughs> We're live! Woo! <laughs> Hi guys, it's me, Danny. Thank you guys, I love you too. Thank you guys for coming to tune in to today's episode of Girl Talk with Danny and B. I'm Danny. Guess what? <laughs> That's not B. That's, That's not, not B. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got my buddy Valerie from Mommy R and R filling in for a few minutes because B is having a few technical difficulties, but we wanted to get rolling on time and talk to you today because we have a good topic. Uh, we're talking self care. Say hi, Val. Ooh. Hey guys, what's up? This is Val from Mommy R and R M O M M Y R A N D R dot com. Hold on, Woo! I'm on the screen. That's what I should have done from before, right? Duh. <laughs> R and R dot com. Yes, that's me. Yay. I'm that, that anti play date. Like, no kids. <laughs> Ditch them, put them somewhere. Yay. Kids and have mommy time. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So you're the perfect person to have today on the show since we're talking pampering and self-care for moms and non-moms. But since I am a mom, that's the kind of mode I'm in. How often do you engage in self-care? And what does self-care look like to you, Val? Um, I've been really, really bad. Um, I haven't really been engaging in self-care like I should be. Okay. Um like I promote to others, uh, just it's just life itself and just work and things like that. I've been getting consumed. But when I do get my hands on some self-care, um, I just like to go to the bookstore and I like to just maybe go to Target by myself or sit in the car and listen to ratchet music. Like I don't have to listen to like, <laughs> like I don't have to censor myself. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a lot, but it's something just to be able to like soothe my brain. Um, but yeah, I don't do it as much as I would like, um, but I'm working on getting better with it because we all need to take time for ourselves. Like we gotta get, get rid of these kids, they're killing us. <laughs> yes. You have to be intentional with it. You yes. Sherelle, yes. Thank you for joining us, first of all, Sherelle. And yes, rest to ratchet music, she says. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I really love that you said that because I feel like a lot of women think that self-care has to be this pretty zen, lotus flower, bubble bath thing. No. And that's not always what self-care looks like in the real world. No. So sitting in your car and listening to some gutter tunes <laughs> is self-care. Heading to the bookstore. Listen, one day I had a Target run. It's like a couple weeks ago. I had a Target run. No kids. What? I could see every aisle. I had my latte. It was glorious. Wow. Was that not like heaven? heaven or something? <laughs> I was like, this is spiritual. Listen, you felt like your soul was satisfied for the moment. And I'm pretty sure you went shopping for the house, but internally you were like, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I had just me. I wasn't anybody's mom. I was just shopping in Target slowly. <laughs> On a yes. Sunday afternoon. Yes, that is the key. And I, I do think like what you were saying, this um, misrepresentation, like what you see on TV and in the movies, you're like, oh, she's like lounging in the spa and she's all dolled up. I mean, that is true. You can do that, but it's not always realistic. Like you can't always get to the spa. I have had a free spa coupon, like free. For a year and every month I say I'm getting there and I have not gotten there yet. So yes, you can do it, but it's not always feasible. You got to do what's around you. If putting your kids to bed an hour early this particular night, then you need to do that. Or if you can do a sitter or if you got your man, your mama, your auntie, whomever, you know, can just watch the kids for a little bit. So you could just take a step out, go to the park, sit in the car, anything that can just like clear your mind, you need to do it. Don't worry about what Mary is doing or what you see on TV, do what's best for you that's gonna make you feel good. Amen. Sherelle says your chill is not like somebody else's. And that is so true. That's so what's true. your chill, Sherelle? What, what's your self care? What do you do? What do you go to? What's your go to? So for me, I um, breathing is one of my things. I will lock myself away 
and just do some quick breathing to kind of calm down, especially when the kids make me want to just like body slam them or give them away or something. <laughs> I need to get away from them physically, mm -hmm. lock the door and just do some breathing exercises, maybe journaling, writing out some type of mantra about how I don't want to body slam them. Breathing exercises. That was, sorry, that was me. Oh, I was like, <laughs> myself back, what was that? Um, so yeah, maybe writing mantras. Journaling is a big one for me and breathing exercises, kind of getting centered or visualizing is another way that I just like quickly get back to myself so I don't knock anybody out, <laughs> you know? Exactly. But there are larger self-care items, like going for a run is self-care for me. I don't know if you do any like movement type stuff, because I know you've been doing some physical stuff lately. I see you. Listen, so I had the brilliant idea of joining up for class pass because a friend of mine is like, oh my God, you have to get all class pass and then we can go together. <laughs> Lies. Okay. <laughs> so I signed up for class pass and it almost killed me because the time was running. Cause when I signed up, I went for like a week, a week and a half and I went normally, but then we had a blizzard. And so like back to back. So now the time is running because I ain't leaving this house in no blizzard to go run. Like that shit ain't happening. <laughs> so now I'm coming down to the last five days. And I swear to you, I did I did eight classes in a week. I was going to like a yoga class, a spin class. Wow. A I was dead. My muscles, I was like, nah, son. I just canceled that and I just went and got some Popeyes. And I was like, this is much better. Like, But how did you feel? How did you feel after the classes? Did you feel all right? I did. I felt good. I, um, I like spin because my knees are like all jacked up. Um, and I also like the yoga. I like the idea of like the peaceful meditation. So I was cool with that. But all that other shit, nah, son, I'm good. Language. <laughs> oh, my bad. I'm from New York. That's like. I know. That's, I'm so Brooklyn. So hood. <laughs> trying to keep these clean. I'm. It's really, it's a struggle for me, but I'm trying my best to keep these clean. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. Brittany, can you hear us? <laughs> Yay, I'm so glad you're on. Yay. Yay. From Danny and D. Um, Shawnee says that she goes to her Bible, journaling, and Pinterest for self care. Yo, I didn't even think yeah. about Pinterest. You Pinterest. get lost in Pinterest, girl. That's yeah. a good one. Yes. Extreme, visualize, pin yeah. all sorts of cute stuff that you'll never make, wear, or go to. I like <laughs> I like it. I love it. <laughs> That's I like the idea of her journaling too. I bought a journal. It's just like you mentioned, you buy it and you never used it. I used it like January one and it felt great, but it's still right here on my desk. I I'm haven't have to talk to you offline because we need to get this stuff together. We need to get it together, mommy, R and R. We do, we do, but yeah, I gotta do better. I promise. I Sherelle promise. says that girlfriends, time with her girlfriends is her self care. I like that. Kimberly Thomas says she <laughs> she says she's all about self care, maybe too much. What does that mean, Kimberly? What kind of self care? I never have too much self care, Kim. Never too much. Never. What's your go to self care? Who? You. Me? Oh, for me, I just I really love to just get away with a book. That's it. I'm simple. I don't need a vacation. I just need to like leave my house. Self care for me is not at home because at home I'm too busy like working cleaning thinking but if i'm away from home with a good book and some good food boo i'm like in a in a happy place very yeah. happy place. what did you guys say i know i'm late but like what were your what were your ideas of self-care uh well we we mentioned that self-care looks different for everyone and yes. we mentioned um i said that i just need to escape my kids real quick go somewhere separate and i do yes. breathing exercises visualization maybe journaling or you know, writing out mantras or reading some of the affirmations I have posted up around the bathroom and just kind of like get out of I'm going crazy mode. So that's yes. one of my like little mini self care routines. But we were also mentioning things just like going to Target alone <laughs> is self or anything alone is self care <laughs> when you're a mom. Why is that Target run so freaking therapeutic? Like a late night Target run without kids. Oh. <laughs> It's glorious. 
This is not sponsored by Target. No. no. <laughs> but, but, it, but it could be. <laughs> I'll add us. Right. Yeah. But you, yeah. you, know what, you know what kills me? I love that you mentioned the late night Target run. Why is it that? Because I don't know what time yours close, but here mine closes like midnight. So, oh, too. Thank you. Yes. so like right around now or maybe a little bit later, I'll say, oh, babe, I'll be right back. I got to get like this detergent, like I'll make up anything. And he's like, oh, well, maybe I can get my mom to watch the kids because they'll be asleep and then we could go together. No, 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 and he's like, but it's dangerous, it's late. Well, first of all, I'm in a car and it's a parking garage with security, I'm good. Trust me, I don't need help right now because the store is empty. And I'm just gonna luxuriate because everyone is gone. It's what I'm telling people. But it is people in Target that laid are other moms who also want to luxuriate down the aisle. So we ain't gonna put each other. Like we're we're in a thing. So people says that a walk in the park, getting her hair done, nails done, facial. Hey, that's real pampering. Go, Kimberly. High five to you. Boom. Cherie um, says long hot baths, and that is listen. Standing oh. in the shower and just letting it beat on my shoulders is like heaven. Therapy, man, it feels so and good. Tamara says, or is it Tamara? Sorry, um, she says, oh, taking a walk. That's yeah. a good one. Taking a walk and just being away, that is self care and it's exercise. It is. So for one, so for one. She also does a supermarket run. That's true. Look at you, you're being efficient. <laughs> Good job, Tamara or Tamara. Um, let's see who else. You guys got some good ones. I'm gonna take some notes. Shawnee says her husband's like a three year old. She has to leave. She has to leave him sometimes. And Sharice, oh Sharice, you're talking my language. Long hot baths with a glass of wine. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, one thing I I meant to just bring up is that we have to really try to be intentional with our self-care mm -hmm. and and do something have some even some tiny little thing that you're doing every day to keep it into to keep it as like a daily routine where you're getting back to yourself where you're centering back to yourself pouring into yourself in some way so what do you guys do you guys have anything that you do daily and to everybody who's um who's commenting do you guys have anything that you do daily to pour into yourself, uh, to pamper or self care, self care yourself, to care for yourself. <laughs> I can talk, I swear. I'm not good at daily. That's a tough one. No. Mm. I think you have to. You have to do it a little bit at a time. Like, even though I said earlier, I have not taken self care. Danny, your question is good because now that it makes me think back, I do have something daily, not so much in the morning because it's like rush, drop off. But at night, like once everyone's gone to bed, I will take that long hot shower at the end of the night because I'm rushing in the morning. So now I'm taking like that extra 10 minutes and then I'm going to have that hot cup of tea and then I'm going to get in the, I'm going to go where he about to go. Um, and then I'm going to get in the bed and then I'm just going to be quiet because everyone's sleep. Mm -hmm. And husband's sleep, kids asleep, house is quiet. So I might read or I might even play like Tetris or something. It doesn't matter, but it's like 10 minutes of just centering myself. So even though I may not do something big, like take a walk or go to the spa, I am doing something like 15 minutes at the end of the night. That's self-care though. That is, awesome. that is exactly real life self-care. That's mm -hmm. exactly what this is about. I'm so glad you shared that routine with us. Do you have a... <laughs> A morning or evening routine, Brittany. And do you guys? Oh, wait, hold on. People are people are commenting. Let me get these comments. Um, Cherie says you can't take good care of anyone else if you're falling apart. Hey, to the men. <laughs> Tamara or Tamara says daily. I make sure the kids are in bed by eight and just sit in silence. That is glorious. Okay, that's what I do. That's mine. After the kids get in bed, I literally just sit. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm no I'm not thinking. I'm not doing. I'm just gonna being... like decompress. Yes. Take yes. yes. around. Yeah. Yep. Well done. Um Shawnee says hers is not answering her phone or emails for a certain time. Good. That's good. a good one. Yes. 
you have to set boundaries, especially yep. like a lot of us, we work for ourselves. And if you have clients or things that's emailing, a lot of times they will email you nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And I'm like, no, nope. no. Nope. There may be a rare night I might email you if I'm having like a, you know, a night owl moment. But that don't mean that you can email. Nope, I ain't. No. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not answering anything like after eight or mm -hmm. after pickup or, or before pickup, I should say, or drop off rather in the morning. So it's like nine to nine. Like, don't. I'm not answering you. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> that's a good one. Do you guys notice a difference um, when you are practicing, you know, intentional self-care versus the times when you're letting it slip? Do you notice a difference in your mood or your energy or anything like that? I'm so cranky when I don't practice it. When I don't practice self-care, I'm quicker to argue with my husband. I'm a little shorter with my kids. I'm not as sweet, patient. Come on, guys. Let's get ready, mommy. I'm like, come on. Let's go. Like, I'm just, it builds up. And then if you don't tap into that self-care almost immediately, it just, it kind of spirals out of control. And then you become somebody you don't like. Yeah. And so that's why, to your point, it's something you have to put into your calendar and put into your schedule. Because if you don't, unfortunately, you and those around you will suffer the consequences. If you don't. Yeah, I clap more. When I notice myself clapping, I'm like, okay, I need a break. Oh, really? Get like, in the bed! <laughs> you know, those kind of moments, I... When I'm clapping, I take a little lay down. See, but then the kids will know at some point they'll be like, okay, mommy's clapping. We need to hurry up and get to bed. Mama, like, you know, I think when they get older, they'll understand what the clapping means. You think. They'll get there. Right? They had any, like, self-preservation skills. <laughs> That's what they would think. <laughs> But no, they want to see how much clapping mommy can do. <laughs> they think it's a game. Like, we're going to clap along with mommy. Okay, okay. mommy, that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm like you. I get, I don't clap. I just get, like, loud. It'll yeah. be, like, one long shout. Like, now I can't get up because he should be in his room, but I can't get up right now to be like, you need to put in the bird. Like, it's <laughs> he knows that too. <laughs> it's time. And I'm like, I told everybody like, because the later the night gets, I want you to quiet down. Like what, you know, that at a 10 level you were like after school, I get you're hyped to see each other, but I need you to bring it down. And I need you to bring it down and get in the bed, go to sleep, close your eyes. Close your eyes. <laughs> I can, it's like they wake up on 10 and they stay on 10 all day long. And I'm just like, good Lord, I love that you have energy, but why do you have the energy? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, please yeah, that's when mommy gets to clap in or yelling and then feeling guilty afterward. But the mom did, That's the thing. That's what I hate that when I'm so, because I didn't practice self-care, now I'm fussing at my kids and now I feel guilty about it because they're in bed and I'm just like, I yelled at them too much today. So it's just like this cycle of frustration, sadness, irritability, guilt, repeat. Self-care makes you a better mama. It does. A better everything. A better wife, a better businesswoman, a better human being. <laughs> Everybody wins. Pour into yourself. Yes. Yes. Oh, hold on. I got to check down here. Um, Tamara says she's definitely short tempered and feels drained and depleted. Yeah, if you're not given to yourself, you're just like, what do you have left but rage? <laughs> and, that's all that's left. Right? <laughs> when the <laughs> coffee dries up, that's all you've got left. <laughs> it's like, what do you have? Nothing. Nothing. But Shawnee says, uh oh, y'all are talking about me. <laughs> I guess it's alone, girl. It must be universal. You are not alone, literally. It's my life. Yes. yes. Let's see if there's any else I missed. Okay. Yeah. So that, okay. So it seems like it's a common thing. So after bed, that's when we take our time and have our me time. Hey, Bianca. Um, that we take our time and pour into ourselves, even if it's just silence, even if it's just breathing, journaling, whatever. But we take those kids are asleep time for us. That's you know what, though? Do you, um, what I think could help with that is I think our kids, no matter what ages they are, little ones, toddlers to teenagers, you've got to teach them how to practice self-care, too. So not only that can they respect 
the mommy needs self-care, but they can also tap into their own version of self-care um, starting young. Like for my daughter, she loves gymnastics. So her self-care is literally just like letting it all out on the mat. It's what she enjoys. She's quiet when she does it. She's kind of like in her little zen mode. And when she taps into that, she comes out a happier, more tolerable kid. Do you guys practice self-care or do you find that your kids practice self-care? Yeah. And it's only, it's funny that you're calling it self-care because I wasn't calling it self-care, mm -hmm. but it really is. We do yoga. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes when Rowan is getting really antsy, he'll ask to do yoga. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, oh my God, look at you recognizing that in yourself. Um, but I notice when they get a little cray cray during the day, it's like, it's time to go run it off. Let's, yeah. just, let's run this weird energy off and then you can come back inside or we trampoline it off. You just go on the tramp and jump it out. <laughs> Get That's that bad juju out of their system. Yeah. And then, you know, we can come back in and do something calmer like arts and crafts or, you know, play some kind of weird game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't thinking about it as self-care. But what, one thing that I do intentionally with Rowan, because he's got some kind of anger issues that we're working on, um, is with the Calm app, I used to do it just alone, breathing in, holding, and then letting go. I think we talked about it on the meditation one, but yeah. now I use the Calm app with him. And so he has this visual circle showing yeah. when to breathe in, when to hold, and when to release the air. And it's just a centering thing for him that I hope he'll carry throughout his life and continue doing. So we I love that app. But we only use it when we're in not so good moments. We should try using it during happy times. So. I can't hear you. I didn't hear you. I don't have that app. Get it. It's a good get one. It. It's free. It's nice. I love it. Calm. Gotta get it. It's not sponsored by Calm. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be. <laughs> Yes. Um, hold on. I'm missing. Hey, Ty. I'm missing some comments. Hold on one sec. Okay. Bianca Don. Hi, Bianca. She says um, they should have a saying for moms instead of happy wife, happy life. You know what? They should. Like yeah. kid free is the way to be or something mm -hmm. like that. We need some type of little mantra. Wow. Um, yes. She says, hold on. Her daughter, Tatiana, loves to read and make crafts as her release. That's great. How old's your daughter again? She's young, right? Like six, seven, something like that. Um, let's see what Ty says. Um, her son, 22, confessed over the weekend that he loves spending time by himself. He said that he remembered when I would say, it's mommy time, go play by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is so valuable. First of all, he's only 22 and he has recognized that in himself. So good momming on your part, Ty. <laughs> and Hopefully good that mom. Huh? I'm I'm that mom now. My kid's four, and I'm like, mom, it's mommy time. So, you know. yeah. I give my kids the tablet. Like I took the longest, hottest shower and deep conditioned my hair today because I gave the kids the tablet, and I was like, if the doorbell rings, don't go near it. And I just took the hot shower, and it was glorious. I needed it. I needed it. Oh my gosh! That's what you guys hear right now. I don't know if you hear like this little chiming in the back that's aside from him running out that's the only reason why he's not like pestering me like i just threw him the tablet and usually we don't, we don't get it now but i'm like okay we're gonna break a rule take this tablet go sit down somewhere like <laughs> and everybody's happy and everybody's happy he's like yeah i gotta treat mommy do these things every week exactly <laughs> it's, the, it's the little things and like those moments of just knowing that you have got a tablet or a book or a craft or something quiet that makes them happy and you're happy Everybody wins. Everybody wins. I'm here for it. Yep. I agree. Totally. Um, so hold on. Let me see if I had other questions for us on this. Um, oh, did we talk about the TV version of self-care? Did we do that? Oh, I think we mentioned it before you got on, Brittany. We were mentioning like junk TV, like trash TV? Huh? No. Well, no, but that is that is a good way to release. <laughs> trash and foolishness. Um, no, but like when we see self-care on tv it's like you know the woman has the cucumber on her eyes she's at a spa her her tub is filled with lotus flowers you know and she has the wine and it's like this image of what self-care is versus the little ways that we can sneak away and get it ratchet tv is bianca's way of <laughs> really but um yeah so in real life we have these that can be it and sometimes it is you know monthly massages you know your many days hair did days get your lip and your brows done, whatever. But most days, it's not going to look like that. Most days, your escape is not going to be super zen mm -hmm. and cucumbers on the eyes. 
So have you noticed that like in what media portrays self-care for mom to be versus what it really is? Yes, and I and I, I have noticed that and I think that's where a lot of moms get frustrated because they think they have to achieve that zen like moment of self care that they have to go to a spa or take some wonderful trip to Sicily and with their girlfriends and they're trying to create what they think is self care when in reality for you it's a shower while your kids are quiet. And so I think we have to, like you said, redefine self care for us and kind of tap into what truly makes us happy. That, and that makes sense because we're not going to do a massage every week or every month even. Um, well, maybe every month. Okay. Maybe every month. <laughs> now, now, what I have as discovered... As as you could get one every month. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say that. I was going to say because a lot of times it's unaffordable, but Groupon can help save you a lot. And if, if even if it's not, okay, I don't want to do a spa, but I want to go to a really nice restaurant, Groupon. I want to go do something adventurous. Groupon. So there are affordable options to get that zen like moment of self care without breaking the bank. So. Yes. I think that um, that view of what self care is supposed to look like um, is one of the barriers for self care. And I also think um, women feeling like, especially women who are also entrepreneurs working from home. So it's like you work outside the home, then you're momming all the time at home, then you're working for yourself at home, and you kind of feel like, I don't have time for self care. I think that's another barrier. Yeah. And I, that conversations like this are important so you can see what self-care is a little a little stolen moment like literally five minutes and we all have five minutes to pour into ourselves so, so I think people say they don't have time because they think it has to be some big ordeal yes yes exactly sometimes it's just changing your nail polish color like that's self-care because it takes a few minutes to focus on you you know um, and I just, I want to, guess, I guess, drive that home to everybody who's watching this or watching the replay or watching on YouTube later that it doesn't have to be a big to do. It can be a little five minutes just for you. And if you get in the habit of giving yourself that five minutes every day in the morning, and then maybe another five minutes again at night, you'll, you'll start to feel a difference and you'll want to give yourself more of that time because you deserve it. Like you deserve to have some moments for yourself, no matter what else you're doing and who else you're serving throughout your day. And like you said, it has to be intentional. If you can't remember to do it, put it in your freaking calendar the same way you put the kids off or doctor's appointment or um, conference call. Put in, dedicate 10 minutes to me, no matter what. Make it seem like you will get fired. You'll fire yourself if you don't do it. It has to be something so important because if you don't, it becomes something of, eh, whatever. Doesn't matter. I'll get to it when I get to it. And then that's when it results into angry, irritable mom and wife, and we all know what happens after that. So it has to be something you make time for. And then I think after you make time for it, it becomes your nature, just something you just know how to do without prompting yourself. So if you are one of those people who feel that you don't have time, bash it with something else. So if you drive to work, maybe listen to a self-help, help, a self-help tape. Help, help. <laughs> uh, or like a novel that you really wanted to read but don't have the time to, maybe listen to that on your drive to work or if you commute while you're on the subway or whatever, listen to something for yourself or listen to your ratchet music on the subway um, with your headphones. Please don't be that guy singing and <laughs> bopping on the subway. Why <laughs> is it always one? <laughs> 7.30 in the morning. Why? <laughs> I just want you to hear it too. Enjoy it, but no, I'm serious. Like, bash it with something else that you that you already do. Um, if if you are cooking, you know, three meals a day, you're cooking for your kids. Maybe put on some ratchet tunes in your ears so you enjoy it more while you're cooking, or just something. So, just the point is to batch it with something that you already do, so that it becomes normal. It just becomes yeah. your new normal. That's a good idea. I've never thought of it that way. I love car sitting. Car sitting is something I really enjoy. If I'm just, if my kids are asleep or they're not with me at the moment, I love just sitting in the car. And I can sit there for like 15 minutes and I'm either reading, it could be Facebook surfing or reading an ebook or whatever. I just enjoy sitting. And I never thought of it that way of batching it with something else that I'm doing. So great idea, Danny. I like that. You feel smart, girl. Uh oh, Shawnee says. I'll try. <laughs> Shawnee says, when I had a meltdown, my husband told me that I, that I needed me time because I was all into taking care of everyone but me. And that's the trap we fall into, Shawnee. I'm so glad you said that. That is the blasted trap that is set for all moms because we have to be perfect and do everything for everybody else. And then, 
oh wait a second who am i again where am i what am i we just yeah. like disappear so yes don't let that happen again shawnee i'm watching you kudos to her husband for noticing that that's pretty cool too true true well i mean if the meltdown she had was at him she just exploded on him how could he not know <laughs> you should. You should. He was <laughs> but yeah no i'm glad that he said that and i'm glad that you took it to heart and are doing something about it because that's important you fall into that trap of gotta do 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 be 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 for everybody i gotta be for me first like come on okay. And I don't feel selfish saying that. I don't think any other mom should either. Because no. it's great to be good for your kids. So how do you talk to the moms who feel guilty about practicing self-care? Because I've never felt this way. I'm perfectly fine doing things for myself. <laughs> I'm a selfish individual and I have zero damn thinking about it, sorry. But um, <laughs> I, I love doing things for myself. But what about the moms who feel badly about even giving a quiet moment? How do we express to them that this is okay and you need this? Well, how guilty would you feel if you're in the hospital for a week with, you know, exhaustion? Sure. Or, you know, how guilty would you feel if you're overtired and then have an accident with your kids in the car? Mm -hmm. So which kind of guilt would you prefer, mom? That's, that's what I would say. That's where I would go because we need to like, you know, snap out of it. <laughs> yeah. I hear that a lot. I hear so many moms, oh, I feel bad for leaving them with my husband or whatever. And and I'm like, really? You That's what you're there for. That's, I don't understand. And I, I've had this conversation in um, not only mom's groups, but just general groups. And they're just like, I don't want to leave my kids yeah. with him because I worry. And then my question always is, and I hate to be blunt, but that's how I am. But then why have kids with him? Like, why have kids with a man or a person, you know, whatever your preference is, but why have kids with a person whom you cannot trust to watch your kids so you can step out to go to the supermarket so that you can go to the bathroom or you can, you know, take a trip or what have you? I just don't understand that. And I find that a lot of it um, is you know, what Danny may say to me if, if I sat in the car and ate, you know, donuts and didn't share with my family, like she might be judging me. But when the reality is Danny is doing the same thing, Not you know. Sleeves of Oreos I have. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like one, you know, I don't know where that feeling comes from, you know, why they feel like their partner can't watch the kids, but I just personally feel like it's what they're, they're worried about what other people are saying when you shouldn't be. Worry about yourself. If it feels good for you and it makes you happy, then that's all that matters. Like who cares what Sari, Sarah, Mary Jo, who cares what they think about it? You do for you and your family because at the end of the day, they're the only people that matter to you. No outside influences. Great. I will admit that I, I used to feel that way. I used to feel nervous about leaving the kids, especially when they were younger with John, just because, not because I didn't think he was capable, but just because he wouldn't do it as good as I would. Oh, and then what? Okay. Thing. So I had to really get over that because yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll come home and the house will be a wreck <laughs> and I will still have food on her face and be wearing the same pajamas <laughs> I left her in. Okay. But you know, she's happy, she's fed, she's yep. not in poop, you know? so not that big a deal and if no, that's the case, them. go and have the spa day or whatever take time to go do something for my business then that's just what it is and no, when i go i can rest it out and give her a bath nobody's gonna treat them the way that you will and I'm, I'm with you danny like i had that realization when i went to um i came back from i don't know some international oh from the bahamas and my husband like the house was a wreck and i'm like why do it, and but then I thought about it. I mean, the kids, everybody was fed. They were happy to see me. The house was a wreck. But I'm like, so what? There it is. Okay. There it is. I was going to take care of your kids the way you can. So what? <laughs> can I admit, I took a trip when I was pregnant with my son who just keeps walking back and forth. Um, my girlfriends and I planned this week long trip to Florida. We went to Miami. The trip was like a year and a half in the making because spouses, pregnancies and all this, whatever. So we finally book it. And I, of course, have to get pregnant, but we going anyway. So I left for seven days. Can I admit I have no guilt for only calling my husband two out of those seven days? Like, 
I may have sent a text like y'all live, but honestly, I really didn't want to talk to you. Not because I don't love you, but the whole point was we're getting away from you. You got it. As long as the house ain't burned down, I'm good. I mean, I may have a kid. I may have a kid in me, and I ain't got. I can't do nothing about that. But he ain't calling my name right now, so it's okay. I can still have like no free. But I didn't feel guilty. Good. Cool. That's it. That's now, it. I don't feel guilty anymore. Now I just miss him. Now I just miss him, and only when it's a long physical distance. Yeah. Right. There with my aunt for a week, like literally ten minutes away. I'll be like, fine, good riddance. I'm not even calling. <laughs> <laughs> away traveling and it's two days. I'm like, oh, I miss him. Oh, wait, hold on. We're getting comments. Sorry, guys. I'm missing it. Um, Bianca says, I'm that mom. Oops. I'm that mom. I don't mind leaving them with my husband and I don't worry, but I hate being away from them for long periods of time. I hear you. Yeah. I mean, I think it's natural. There's got to be something like biological with it. I don't know. <laughs> Shawnee says, oh, yes, I used to feel so guilty for thinking about me. Ain't that a shame? I did not want my little girl not feeling loved by mommy. She knows you love her, boo. I did not want my husband to feel left out. But listen, you got over it, right? You got over it? Please tell me you got over it, Shawnee. Because <laughs> you got to do Away from husbands, too. It's not just kids, too. I feel like husbands are like the extra kid, and they're like, honey, honey, where's this? Where's that? Okay, yeah, I'm getting away from everyone. I love you. I do, but I just don't want to see you right now. I Distance makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> I love being around my family. They're my best little tribe. I just love them, but you know what? For my sanity, I need silence. I need nobody touching me, oh, nobody asking me for things. I don't want to hear my name. <laughs> Plus it's a reminder that um, you have, you're more than just a mom. You're more than just a wife. You existed before your spouse, before you met your spouse and you existed before you became a mom and regular time away from them, and maybe not even away from them, but regular time to focus on you. is just a reminder that it can remind you of your purposes and your passions and your goals and things that make you happy. And we need that as women. We need that consistently because we can't get lost. My, one of my biggest fears of motherhood was getting lost. I didn't want to be that mom that was like so consumed with my kids that I forgot the things that I wanted to do. And I feel very fortunate that, I mean, sometimes life can be over consuming with, with kids. But for the most part, I've been pretty focused on what I've wanted to do, but it's because I practice getting away and finding those little quiet moments to shower while the kids are, are watching something on it on the tube. So it's like we need it for us and we need to do it regularly. Like it can't be something that you do once a week. It needs to be something that happens more times than that. Not just before we were wives and mothers, but we gotta think about after. Yeah. These kids, Eighteen, they're leaving us, they're going to college and we have and what are we gonna do? Twiddle our thumbs? No, we gotta be a full human yep. being still. And then they're going to go and start their lives. Who are we going to be? We're not just going to be mommy. Mm -hmm. you know? So we have to really consider that. Shawnee has gotten over her guilt. Yay, have Shawnee. So good job, Shawnee. Good job. <laughs> this is 940. Let's, let's wrap it up. Is there any last thing that you want to say to moms regarding self-care and pampering? Either one of y'all. I'm hysterical because my husband, I don't know if you saw him, he's like in the shadow and he literally got on the floor to crawl into the other room. <laughs> That's why you saw me. He's like, he's Batman. Um, what is the question, Danny? I'm sorry. Just any last words for moms regarding self-care? We're just wrapping. Um, yes. Um, last words to... Take it to start it in spurts. Don't worry about trying to take your first dip into self-care like, oh, I have to take 20 minutes or 30 minutes. No, you don't have to start there. Just take two minutes, three minutes, and then gradually increase it from there and do it daily or do it as many times as you can remember to do it. Mark it on a calendar so that it goes from um, forcing yourself to doing it and it becomes a way of life. It just becomes habit. So those are my words. Where are you? Oh my God. Those are my words. All right. 
killing me. <laughs> thanks for coming on for this episode. Thank I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. See ya. All right, Britt, do you have any uh, last like tip or anything for the mom? Um, I don't. I guess one of the biggest things that I wanted to stress was that if it's something that you feel like you can't do to um, maybe remind your friends or have your friends remind you. Um, I like to ask my friends two questions regularly. How's your mental health? And what have you done for yourself lately? And what have you done for you lately? Yeah, because those kind of questions make me remind people it's been a while since I've done something for myself. And we've got to get in the habit of asking our girlfriends and hey, you know, asking our friends to ask us every now and then so that we can be intentional about it. Because sometimes you might skip the calendar and forget about it. Or sometimes you just, your kid's sick, your husband's out of town, you're kind of not feeling good, you're swamped. And so you really don't have that time. But until someone's like, hey, anyone's lost something, something for yourself. And you're like, yeah, it's been a minute. You know, so sometimes I think we need to be a village and remind each other we got to do this regularly. So, so I got to say about that. What about you? What's your last little tidbit? Um, for those who aren't practicing self care um, or aren't intentional about it, my one tip is to make a list of things that will make you feel good. Little things that don't have to take too much time. So if you're thinking, like, well, what is self care to me? Figure it out by just writing a list of all these little things that you might want to do, whether it's just taking a hot bath or watching some ratchet show, um, having some dessert you don't normally have, any little thing that'll feel good. So when you do have it scheduled on your calendar, like Brittany suggests, you can pull from one of these things on the list and it won't be like, well, oh no, it's self-care Saturday. What do I do? Uh, uh, do I go to a spa? No, just look at your list and say, okay, take a walk and listen to ratchet music while I do that. Done. Fine. And so right. have that handy so that it becomes something that you're just aware of. Keep it in your consciousness. Keep it in your mind. Yes. Um, and just remember that you deserve it. You really, truly deserve it. I don't care what else you have going on. And you, you are always more important. You are always more important than whatever else is going on. You Unless you're actively in labor, and then it's kind of about the baby. But <laughs> other than that. You need it. You need self-care. This isn't an option. This is, a, this is something you have to do. You have to. So shut up and do it. Make it happen. There it is. Boom. All right. So we're good. Guys, thank you guys for coming on. Shawnee, Bianca, Ty, who else? Tamara. We had a few great people coming commenting. Um, who else? Sharice. Thank you guys for coming on. Really appreciate it. And we will see you guys here. Same bat time, same bat channel next week, okay? I'll be on time next week. Yay. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank Bye, you. Bye, friends.